Ah, see him a beast when he hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when he hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha, Yeah, me, I'm a G ring, he in the sound like All right, everybody, Jake Noerker here with Jasmine Jazdavicius fighting this weekend, February 25th, UFC Vegas 70. Jasmine, happy officially fight week. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah, we just got into Vegas uh, yesterday, actually. Oh, you're already in Vegas, ready to ready to go down? Yeah, yeah, we uh, came in early, we brought a bunch of guys from the team and uh, settling in. Mike, Mike Malote, is he or is that how you say his name? Is he on your team? Yeah, he's on my team. Uh, he's not coming until Tuesday, though. OK, I think I'm talking with him Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and I knew you guys shared a team, so I'll ask about him later. But more importantly, you, you're fighting. Gabriella Hermogenes. I don't know if I got that right or not, but it doesn't matter. Your show. Yeah. What are your thoughts on her as an opponent? Um, I think she's a good opponent. Like you know, she's uh she's solid everywhere. I think she's more of a striker, but um, but yeah, I'm ready to get in there. And how do you feel like your style that you bring to the table matches up against hers? I think my style matches up. You know, I. Uh, always have that wrestling in my back pocket. So I think, you know, it works out well. And you did a lot of kickboxing in the past before too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, definitely worked on my striking, like since my last fight as well. But you know, you're wearing the wrestling shirt there. That's the bread and butter. So <laughs> like you said, always in the That's... back pocket. Um, yeah. And so, you know, she's like on, I just, I looked her up before this uh, seven fight win streak, LFA champion, making her debut against a tough opponent like does any of that phase you at all does any of that i don't know stick up for her reputation or just another opponent in the way you know just another opponent like yeah every everyone that i fight you know you look up their background they're obviously going to be super super skilled and have a ton of accomplishments so you know i'm whatever man it's who's in front of me well, let me ask you, because you have had three fights in the UFC, if you count contender series. Now, when you first got there, were you at all like thrown off or surprised, I guess, for lack of better words, by the level of competition? And do you think she'll kind of also be thrown off by how high level you are? Yeah, there's definitely a step up and you you feel it right away. So, um, yeah, exactly. Ideally, that's what it, that's what it feels like. <laughs> Well, she she's gonna learn, I guess they say. Um, <laughs> That's right. Right, right now, I don't know if you bet at all, but it, you're both at about pick a odds minus one ten a piece, so no favorite, no underdog, so to speak. Very close. Do you put any value on that or at all, or you leave that to the de uh, de degenerates? Yeah, you know, I honestly, I don't care. I'm I'm going in there and fight. Like I don't bet or anything like that. So whatever. <laughs> Do you have a prediction for the fight? You know, I I predict that my hand's gonna be raised at the end of it. I'm gonna be hunting for that finish like always, but um, but I'm ready to go three rounds if if I have to. I'm gonna be more patient, and so, you know, but as long as my hand's raised by the end. So I mean, obviously you want the quick finish, but you're well prepared for the 15 minutes, correct? Exactly. Um, you know, I think before I tried to to force the finish too much and. and you know, this time I'm understanding how to play the game a little bit more. And, you know, you start out 2-0 and with the UFC, if you count contender series, you get that win and then the win in your debut. Last time out, you take your first loss under the promotion. You lost a decision, didn't go your way. Does that kind of like add any extra fire, any extra fuel going into this? Like, are you extra motivated to get back in the win column? Yeah, it definitely does, man. It feels like that loss just like hangs on you, like this heavy cloud. Like, you know, there's there's nothing that gets the fire going more than coming off of a loss. And that was all the way back in June. Like, why you been out so long? Anything specific? No, nothing specific. I was trying to fight. Um, I, it was November, and I don't know. I didn't really hear anything, and then. I heard that there was supposed to be a Canada card. So I'm like, okay, if I don't get booked in December, then for sure it'll be, Jan the rumor was January was a Canada card. And so I was kind of like just waiting for that and uh, or thinking that that was a for sure thing. And then I heard that that wasn't happening. So I was like, okay, like, let's just get a fight. I don't care where, what, what it is. Like, let's get the a fight ASAP. And uh, then February 25th was the option. So we took it. When the hell 
is UFC coming back to Canada. I don't think they've been back there since before COVID, right? Seriously. And I want to fight at home so bad. Yeah. Ah. I, I've been like, you know, I'm in Philadelphia and they haven't been over here in a long time. They go to New York, but they haven't been to Philly since like 2018. So Dana White, Philly and Canada, come on, man. Let's get it going. Seriously. Yeah, seriously. Hopefully soon. Um, And this fight is at the Apex Center. This is your first time back there since Contender Series, right? Yep. Are you excited to fight there again? Did you like the atmosphere there? Um, I'm excited to fight there because I am comfortable there. Like just, you know, I had contender series there, but I love a crowd, man. Like I love a crowd so much. It gets me hyped. So the idea of fighting without a big crowd, like, uh, you know, doesn't get me as, as jacked up, but, um, but I am happy about it because I definitely am comfortable there. So, you know, there's pros and cons. How are those UFC crowds when you're in the Octagon? You fought in where Austin and then Anaheim. Yeah, it, it it's crazy. It's like the the biggest rush ever. I love it. I've only been there like up in the nosebleeds, and then I think in April I'm finally going to get some media credentials and be down there in the Octagon. And I am I'm so excited to hear that. Like crazy. Oh, you're gonna love it. Can't wait. April fifteenth in Kansas City. I'm hoping. So fingers crossed. Um, and you're still training at. Niagara top team yes yep how's how's camp going good camp's going great yeah you know I did a bit of my camp at ATT I was there at the start of it and then came home for uh, like three and a half something weeks and um and yeah you know it it's been awesome I, I have such a great team at home they're they're so supportive like literally half of them came out here with me That's so awesome. um yeah we we've got like 11 guys here i think um but yeah it's 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 so sick like we have such an awesome team you and you and mike are gonna have some loud fans in that apex huh oh yeah i'm excited to hear it um so for like the, the casuals who don't follow the gyms as closely as some of us do can you just name uh, name drop some of your coaches teammates yeah so obviously mike malai he's big big time at the gym uh, my coach is chris prickett uh matty mark antonio and Matthew Jelly, they're in the cor- in my corner for this fight. Now, coming off of the loss, like without giving me specifics and giving away details to your camp, was there anything you like changed up differently or felt that you needed to work on? Like, did you come into camp with a different mentality this time? Yeah, I did. I um, I feel like I had to develop patience. Like, I was always like, go, 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 go. Like, trying yeah, you to- were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a good way. It, it, yeah, of course, you know, like, that's how I got to this level by by doing stuff like that. But um, now it's like, I have to recognize that I'm competing against these girls, they're the best in the world. So I can't just go forward the whole time. Like, you, you have to give a little to get a little. And I feel like I've like evolved as a martial artist to be able to to realize that that's part of the sport. That's awesome because, I mean, as exciting as it is to watch you go head first and just boom, 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 and knock girls out, I'm sure the patience will only, like, make you level up, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm going to, like, strike even harder when, when those opportunities are there. You know, so- Connor always says precision beats power, blah, blah, blah. It's all about that one that one shot. Um, And then I also yeah. saw you were training down in Florida with Joanna, right? Yes. Yeah. I, um, it was, she was, she arrived a lot, couple of days before I left. So I think I saw her for three days and I had the opportunity with, to train with her and man, I look up to her so much and, uh, to be able to train with her was like, it was awesome for me. Was that like, obviously you just said it was awesome. I can't imagine the looks you got. Was that like the, for lack of better words, the highest level of competition you've trained with, do you think? Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, she's been the champ for, for so long, like just, and I, man, I have so much respect for her because people don't know outside of the MMA world, how many obligations like she would have had as being the champ. She would have media obligations, Mm -hmm. interviews, sponsorships, like, and to be able to juggle that and still compete the way that she did, like it, it blows my mind. The queen of violence. She has that name for a reason. Seriously. Um, and then, you know, we're talking about your teammate, Mike Malat here, fights on the yeah. card with you. Going up against fellow Cage Fury alum, uh, Johan Liness. How does that fight go down, Mike, getting that dub? 
Mike Scanlata, man, he is so good, man. He's so technical. He's so talented. He's solid everywhere. And um, I I just, yeah, he's getting the W for sure. And I, how, do you know how many tickets they sell for the Apex Center? No, I wish more. I, sure. I don't even think I get any tickets. Like, I don't, I have no idea about it, but it, well, yeah. Where I'm going with that is if it's 50, 100 seats, something like that, 11 it sounds like of those seats one tenth at least is going to be your guys crew that's pretty awesome i think so it's going to be loud in there um so you know saturday night comes you get the big dub back in the win column three and one with the ufc or two and one if you don't count contender series what's next for you like when do you want to get back in there are there any names you want to fight well, you know, God forbid I come out of this fight without any damage and I can jump back into camp right away. I mm-hmm. I, I want to fight a bunch of times this year. I uh, definitely don't want to be off as long as I was last time. So, um, you know, hopefully I can jump back in right away. As for names, I don't I don't know, man. I feel like I'm so lo- like zoned in on this fight. I don't even know who exists right now, you know. So I, I'll have to uh, get back to you on that one. Hey, whatever, you know, go kick some ass here and then think about it later. doesn't matter right now. I'm just asking because I'm a fan and I'm curious. Um, When your career is said and done, let's look forward 10, 15 years, whatever it be. What do you want to say you have done that you haven't done yet, if that makes sense? Uh, hold that bell, man. You know, that's that's why you get into it. You want to become the best in the world to to be able to you know, put your life into something and to see it fulfilled like that, that would be an amazing thing. And uh, so that's, that's what I, that's what I would have to say. So your first MMA fight amateur, you were 27 years old, right? 26. 26. So Mm -hmm. a lot of the girls you're fighting have been training strictly MMA since they were like 12 years old. You know, that's just like the new generational thing. Obviously I grew up wrestling. You grew up wrestling. We've all done combat sports, but now people are training MMA since they're kids. How do you, who started at 27, a lot of people would say that's late in the game. How do you go out there and still kick these girls ass? Like from an outside perspective, you would think, wow, that's a disadvantage, but it doesn't seem like that at all with you. No, I, you know, I think it's a combination of things. I think, one is that, yes, I did start later, so I don't have the wear and tear on my body that a lot of these girls will, will have. Two, I've, like, seen the other side. I, I don't, you know, I've done all the partying. I've done the traveling. I've done all everything that you would, like, kind of take away, take you away from training. I've done all that. And so I'm, I'm so, like, laser focused and dedicated. My day from start to finish is only MMA and getting better at martial arts and so I feel like like that kind of stuff gives me advantage as well as like I just have all I got old lady life experience you know I think (laughs) I I think that's part of it you know like they say respect your elders it's it's um, you know it's for a reason that we just know I, I think about me in my 20s what I know now compared to in my 20s you know I'm a completely different person so I think it's a combination of a bunch of things I, I can totally relate like I'm only 25 turning 26 soon and I'm already at the stage like for example my wife and I this past weekend we spent the weekend building a chicken coop we didn't go to a bar we didn't go hang out with friends now we built a chicken coop so we're getting yeah old. the good stuff oh that's the good stuff that yeah. is the good stuff i'm not complaining at all it was just a good oh, comparison yeah. there. um so oh, two yeah. two quick just general ufc questions because we're talking about the top of the uh the flyweight division and last night we saw aaron blanchfield go out there and shock the hell out of me against jessica andras did you catch that fight you know, we actually flew, we were flying at the time. And um, so I didn't end up seeing the fight. I still haven't watched it, but I, I'm actually, I'm going to watch it tonight. Well, it was an incredible performance by Blanchfield. Definitely recommend watching it because that could be somebody you're fighting someday. I assume after that win, Blanchfield is maybe next for the winner of uh, Grasso versus Shevchenko. That's the weekend after your fight. And that's the champion yeah. of your, your division, somebody you want to fight someday. So who do you think takes that one, Grasso or Shevchenko? I think Shevchenko will will win this fight. Um, you know, she's 
she's obviously super talented but I feel like every time she fights she gets like humanized a little bit more and I think like you know we're us like coming up get to see her and watch her and like study how to beat her whereas she doesn't get to do that with us like I mean yeah she she does once we get matched up and everything but you know what I mean it's like I get I get to I get so much information on her and um so but I I still think uh she's she's just so talented and technical that she'll take the win this time so you know you go on like a three four five fight win streak you could be right up in that title picture in a year or two how do you see you matching up with somebody as good as Valentina Shevchenko I mean, I think that I can compete with the best in the world. I uh, I know I obviously still have to prove myself, but, um, you know, everyone everyone has weaknesses. And, you know, it's who, who can exploit the other person's weakness on the fight night. I, and I think I, I really, truly believe in my skills and abilities to be able to do that. Hey, you're in the UFC for a reason. So I, I totally agree. And hopefully someday we can see that fight or at the least see you fighting for a belt if she's not still around. Um, mm-hmm. So Jasmine, we've been talking fighting here for like 17, 15 minutes, something like that. Enough of that for a second. Let me just ask about Jasmine, the person when you're not Jasmine, the fighter, right? Like when you're not training, when you're not in the octagon, how do you spend your free time? Any like hobbies or interests? I cook a lot. I really, yeah. I really enjoy cooking. I yeah. saw you egging it up today. Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, you know, kind of strict diet because we're coming into a fight week. But, uh, but yeah, I love cooking. After my fight, I'm gonna do a a big meal, and uh, I'm not too sure what it is yet. But, but I'm gonna make something epic. What's your like favorite kind of uh food to cook? Whether it's like a certain cultural region or something like that. You know, I don't, I, I feel like I'm still in like the developmental stage of, of my cooking. So I'm just trying to, to cook all different things and different styles. So I don't really have a, have a favorite. I mean, I would say overall, like uh, maybe like a roast or something. I'm, I'm always like very good with those simple like e- easy things like that mm-hmm. but um but yeah i feel like i'm still really experimenting i'm i'm trying to learn uh, everything i can with cooking as well i you said roasts are easy roast is like the one meat <laughs> i just can't i can't get right my wife's great at it i can't get a roast life right to save my life so congrats to you oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, luckily so- your wife can do it luckily she can do the roast She's great cake. She handles that all the time. She's the reason I, uh, I get bigger from working out, you know, Wife, <laughs> Oh, it all to her. Um, so Jasmine, tons of fans and supporters. You're gonna have a lot of eyes on the fight. ESPN plus UFC fight pass. You know, the deal, anything you'd like to say to everyone, the mic is yours. Uh, just, yeah, check out my fight. I, uh, I love, I love the fans. Like this is why, why I do it. And, um, you know, thanks for watching. Hell yeah, Jasmine. Thank you so much for joining. For real, I appreciate you taking time out of your day and training and rest up. Take it easy this week because Saturday night, I cannot wait. And when I say this, I mean it. Kick ass, okay? Thank you so much. All right, everybody, go follow Jasmine and make sure you tune tune into her fight. UFC Vegas 70, February 25th. Jasmine, have a great night and uh, thank you again. Thank you.